ever been listening to your favorite podcast and think, hey, I want to start my own? Then you need Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First, everyone's favorite word, free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Honestly, this synopsis might be longer than my review. Lies, deception, and betrayal are all the things these Maserati, Maserati, Maserati brothers are feeling. When the statement was done and the dark comes to light deemed to be true for them, these men find themselves not knowing how to move forward. The women they thought loved them unconditionally never really loved them, and to find out the truth becomes unbearable. Loving a king is only for a queen, and these brothers have yet to find their queens. They thought they did, but the mask these women wore, these women were wearing, disguised who they really were. Cherry Maserati, a queen in her own right, has her share of secrets. Everything she's ever done was to protect her and her family. A mama bear always protects her cubs. And once she feels as though her cubs are being threatened, she springs into action. Cherry has been on a hiatus from who she really is for the sake of her family until they awaken the beast inside of her. All, all her secrets spill out, her back is against the wall, and she's hoping for a way out. Always being a survivor, Cherry can only hope that she makes it to the end in this final so- showdown. Gemini Maserati is fighting for his life after being shot by Sasha and her sister Nova. Everyone is rooting for his downfall, but the one person he played is the one person hoping he makes it. If Gemini comes through this ordeal, he has a lot of soul searching to do, and he has to weed out the snakes. Dream is a lot of things, and Loyal is one of them. Torn between the love she has for her man, her loyalty to her sisters, she doesn't know which direction to turn to. Until Karma rears her ugly head and Dream herself is the one facing the barrel of the gun. She knows at that moment which path she should have chosen and now she's wondering if it might be too late for her. Taurus Maserati being the baby of the clan never felt as much pressure as he did in those final moments of finding out the truth. To find out the woman he fell for was a fraud and after all this time his mother was right about her has him feeling some type of way. He's glad he found out the truth, so now he can move forward with Stoney without any regrets. But it's hard to do when he can't seem to let go of the past. Will will placing his past in front of his future ruin everything for him? He has to find the courage if he wants to be all he can be to Stoney and his son. Stoney has had her share of trials and tribulations. Life has been rocky for her since day one. After losing her mother at a young age, she has to learn how to become a woman without any guidance. She's made some mistakes, and she has some secrets she vowed to take to her grave. But when a blast from her past threatens to reveal everything about her, she has to do the unthinkable, causing her life to spiral out of control like she's never seen before. Virgo had it all, and feelings weren't one of them. When reconnecting with Patience, his first love caused him to open himself back up. He doesn't like it. He fell back in love, and now he has to figure out how to control his emotions. She has a hellbent ex. She has an ex hellbent on making his life a living hell. Virgo does everything in his power to remain calm, but after being pushed to his limits, he can he can't take it anymore. And he may do something that will destroy him and Patience relationship forever these couples are stuck between a rock and a hard place they have to learn how to trust love and show loyalty to one another if they want to make it it has never been easy loving a king and the kings didn't know the measures it would take loving a queen but in this final installment they all learned that being loved royally is the best love that one can ever receive (sighs) 
Y'all, I told y'all that I was going to read the second part because I just had to know how this story ends. And this story was released April 4th, 2020. So that was literally just two years ago. And when I say we need editors, this is what I mean. Like reading that synopsis was so hard for me to get through because if you go on the Amazon page and see how it, there's no space in between it. It's just all together. And for it to be a synopsis, it's really too long. Um, I don't, y'all, like my eyes. I just hate to feel like I'm shitting on her because that is not my intention. But yeah, this review isn't going to be that long. I'm surprised if I'll make it to uh 10 minutes. So the book is really just a lot of back and forth of all this running around of Cherry, Mama Maserati, who feels like she's being disrespected by her kids because they're not doing what she wants them to do and that they actually fell in love with women and they're not supposed to fall in love with women because women are just pussy and basically like you can have sex with these bitches but you feelings what are those you should never have any of those and it all stems back from the first part where we learned her life story she was never loved properly so now in the image of her eyes of being wrong she doesn't see women as valuable because she loves her sons like her sons they're kings they're royalty and she's the queen and these are her kings and but every woman that her sons are with like she doesn't see them as valuable and a lot of the drama in their life like she has made that drama it's like you're blaming everybody else saying you had to do what you had to do for your family but you also create the shit that your kids are going through like gemini okay so she did not know about the girl which i don't anybody can be blindsided but in the way this story goes like there's no reason why because she got fbi in her pocket she got policemen in her pocket it's like how do these four girls just show up in y'all life and turn it upside down and you didn't know nothing about it but i feel like that comes from her being like too narcissistic just believing that she's that bitch so nobody could touch her or do anything to her so she didn't pay attention to them so it's not even that they tricked her it's just she was oblivious um so Taurus learned that you know their sisters and they're all together and he had kidnapped their mother and he calls up Corey for them to do an even trade so she brings him his money back that she had been stealing and you know he's like here you can have your mother uh, but before she even makes it over to Corey, he shoots her in the back of her head. And Corey's like, no, you promised you would let her go. It's like, yeah, bitch, I said I would let her go. I didn't say I would let her live. I don't know why you thought. And it's like, if y'all claim to know these niggas and know what these niggas are about, why did you why did you think he would give you an even trade? Like, come on now. And Cherry, you know, she was still in the FBI uh, interrogation room until one of nova's co-workers came in and said you know the higher up said she's being transported to somewhere else so let her go and he actually worked for her and he was like her getaway and her and danny had to kill him so she's been on the run like basically the whole book she had to hide out while still knowing everything that's going on and it's just like girl why ain't nobody shot you yet because cherry is so fucking annoying man it's like her ideology and how she thinks on things is just she's really a kid that never grew up never got the chance to grow up while having four children um so taurus and stony their relationship is just insane and so at first he uh he wasn't feeling her because she went back to um 
oh boy what was his name jasper she went back to jasper um after he assaulted her you know like he whooped her ass like she was a man um but it was because he was blackmailing her because he had a usb of a video of her being a part of basically an orgy like she used to be a part of an escort service back in the day and he was one of the guys that she was a part of and unbeknownst to her they filmed the situation and so he tells her you know if you don't want your little boyfriend to see this then come on back home and she didn't she didn't want that out there so she agrees to go back until they do this back and forth of cussing each other out and i didn't want to tell you and you could have told me i would have taken care of it it would have been you know not a problem so it's just like okay whatever and that's the thing with another one of my gripes about the writing all these people do is yell at each other. it's like it goes from yelling to oh i love you so much basically like one big loop of baby boy i hate you i hate your ass too i love you jody and i'm just like uh i don't know so in the end okay so let's get to this right quick in the end Taurus and Stoney meet up with Corey, who makes them play Russian roulette with their child. And in the end, it says to be continued, but this is supposed to be the final installment. So even if a third book ever does come out, I won't be reading it. Gemini, you know, remember he was shot in the back and he died like how real G's do, although he didn't die. Um, And Dream is like visiting him in the hospital and she was shot herself like when he got up from the hospital i mean when he woke up in the hospital he didn't want to stay there too much longer so he just got up put his bloody clothes that he was shot in and put them back on and walked out but as he's walking out he sees that dream is being brought in on a stretcher because her and her sister were getting into arguments about you know i wasn't supposed to go down like this i'm not doing this um and so when they meet up to get on a plane and get away from illinois she shot because they like you know we can't have no disloyalty in the family it's us or nothing um he ends up marrying dream like they're still in love they still get back together which she killed your brother like it was bad enough when you know he died and you start sleeping with the other brother while knowing that He's in a relationship with your best friend, which turns out to be your sister in real life. But then it's like the fact that y'all know that she killed this man and you go off and you marry her. Like, make it make sense. And everybody is looking at him like he's crazy. He even fights Taurus at one point. Like, watch how you talk to my wife. Like, nigga, your wife, she killed our brother. What is you talking about? Um, And then Virgo, he asks Patience to marry him, but... Technically, she's still married to the FBI agent. So it's like, she tells him no, but it's like, I literally have to until I get this divorce. So, I mean, there's nothing that we can do. And so he's having hurt feelings about this. And then some girl that he was messing with after, you know, um, patients went off and went to college, some chick named Raven, he got married to her and they were moving drugs together. But um, on a trip to Jamaica, she got caught at customs and had to do eight years in Jamaica. So now all of a sudden she's out and he got their marriage like annulled, I guess, while she was in prison. Um, But come to find out, like, Cherry sent her his way. But when they got married, she didn't like the fact that they got married. So she was the one that got her caught at customs. So he would divorce her because he didn't like, she hates all women. She doesn't look at any of them as valuable. And in the end, because she felt like nobody was respecting her, she, um, she gets dream pulled over and caught up with, some ski mask and some money in the back of a car and the officer tells her mrs maserati sends her um regards so dream is going away to jail so she's taking dream away from gemini she kidnaps patients and um she is sexually assaulted 
which while she's pregnant and patience is like I hate this but she's pleading like I'm pregnant please don't do this to me and she tells her that her mouth is not but then there's a description of the guy on top of her pumping away so she is sexually assaulted all of this to teach her kids a lesson but it's like why won't you do this to your kids why are you torturing the women in their lives it's like once again you're not doing anything to your kids you're doing it to the women that so it's like it is going quote unquote hurt them and upset them but what's being done is being done to the women not your actual kids so it's like that's fucked up but she has always been fucked up um and then yeah like i said she calls court well cherry gets jasper to call Corey because at one point Corey was trying to team up with Jasper to take them down as well because oh I forgot Cherry uh killed Nova um and Gemini found Sasha in Miami and killed her so the only two sisters left is Dream and Corey so Corey was trying to team up with Jasper to get that tape out there for everybody to see about Stoney to in the long run hurt Taurus. Anyway, this it was a mess, y'all. It really was just a mess. But I had to read it because the first book, the first book wasn't half bad. Like I said, it was the wording and how it's all scrunched up together and how she just goes from I hate your ass. Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out. Bitch, who the fuck you think you talking to? To I love you so much. I want to marry you. Like, what? And then this book, I the second book, I it ain't even it was terrible. Like I there's no other way to put it. I'm so sorry. Please get an editor. Please have somebody help you space out these thoughts and to make it more flowy and actually make sense. Because when you think there's no reason why these couples should be together and it should make sense at all. It really doesn't. But anyway, that is my short review because I really don't have too much to say about this book. Um, Yeah, peace, blessings.